Hi, this is Dylan Jones, and I'd like to welcome you to another Tech Talk by Frontier Precision. In today's session, we'll provide an overview of the Trimble GNSS status utility. So you might be wondering, what is the Trimble GNSS status utility? Well, it's a free downloadable application for iOS, Android, Windows PC, or Windows Mobile that will provide a platform for the user to configure his or her GNSS receiver. Currently, it is designed to work with the Trimble R1 and R2 GNSS receiver. The user is able to configure mainly two things, the primary and secondary real-time correction source, as well as the NMEA output if the receiver has that option. The configuration will override iOS and Android internal GPS location services, and the application will provide live GNSS information status, such as the estimated real-time accuracy in the field. You will need three things to get started. First, you will need a Trimble R1, R2, or future compatible GNSS receiver. Second, you will need a mobile device or PC with GNSS status utility application. Lastly, the two devices will need to be connected via a provided cable or Bluetooth pairing. Once we are set up with those three things, we can begin configuring our receiver for field use. When we open up GNSS status, we start here on the home screen you'll see that there's no receiver connected. So we'll want to click the arrow on the bottom right to select a new receiver. Now this will pull up the list of paired Bluetooth devices. So you'll need to previously pair your receiver with your mobile device, whatever it might be. If you need assistance in pairing your receiver with a mobile device via Bluetooth, we do have Tech Talk videos that explain how to do that. I'm going to choose my R2 receiver and hit the connect button. Once we are connected, you'll notice here in the top bubble the number of satellites in use, your estimated accuracy. On the lower right, you'll see your correction source. Right now I'm using uh, VRS end trip and on the lower left you'll see your battery status indicator. So that's a little rundown of the home screen. Next let's go into the detailed status menu. Under detailed status you'll see information about your GNSS receiver such as the current receiver time or the GPS time, your latitude, longitude, and altitude, your estimated horizontal and vertical accuracy, you can check what correction type you're currently using, the correction age, and the antenna type that you're using. So I'm using the internal R2 antenna. Next, if we scroll down, we'll see the satellites. Uh, I'm currently tracking nine GPS satellites, but using seven of them in my solution. Currently tracking and using zero SBAS satellites. Uh, and that's just because I'm using VRS for my primary source. And then I'm using seven GLONASS satellites. I am tracking five Galileo satellites at the moment, but I am not using any in my solution. And the R2 receiver is capable of tracking QZs and BIDO uh, constellations. Um, those aren't really implemented yet, but in the future they should be. As my primary source, I am using my VRS or internet connection. That's through an NTRIP server. I've been connected for roughly two and a half minutes. And if there is ever an error with your VRS uh, connection, you will see that here. Usually, uh, I have seen where uh, the username or password is incorrect. Uh, that would display right here. And then lastly, some information about the receiver. So you'll see my serial number, the firmware version, and the battery life that is currently um, set to this receiver. Next we'll go into the app settings. And this is very simple. It's just going to allow you to change uh, the measurement units. So whether you're using metric or US, you do have the option there. Next we'll go into receiver options. This, uh, this screen will allow you to install uh, a code such as NMEA output. 
So what you would do is you would enter in that code here and hit the submit button and that would allow you to activate uh, whatever option that you are adding to your receiver. If we go into the real-time configuration section here, um, you'll be able to edit what your primary source is and your secondary source. So I'm going to hit the edit button in the top right. And in the first drop-down, I have selections to use Trimble RTX corrections, whether that's internet-based, satellite-based, or any. Next we have internet, which I was previous, uh, previously set up with. Uh, this would be for your VRS uh, network connection. So I have uh, entered in my uh, Minnesota VRS network information here. Uh, this would be where you put your IP number uh, or your IP address and your port number. Uh, you'd select your NTRIP source or your mount point and then your login credentials. There is an option at the bottom here for a secondary source type. So typically I'll use an SBAS uh, correction source for my secondary source type if my VRS corrections um, are unavailable. You do also have the option to choose uncorrected for either your primary or secondary source type. And you also do have the option to choose SBAS as your primary source type. I'm going to leave it at internet for my primary and SBAS for my secondary and hit save. And then now the last option here uh, is the NMEA settings. So this is a little new. In NMEA settings you have um, various NMEA sentence strings which uh, hold information about um, GNSS data that would be going across from your receiver to a third party application. So say I want to send across uh, GGA sentence string, I would be able to select that and apply that to my receiver. Lastly, if you need to know what version of uh, software or what version of GNSS status you're currently using, uh, you do have that in the About section here. Now that I've configured my Trimble GNSS receiver, I can use these settings to override my iOS or Android internal location services to collect much more accurate location data. Or if I'm using the GNSS status application on my Windows PC or Windows mobile device, the live GNSS information will give me peace of mind that the data I'm collecting is indeed reliable data. That concludes our overview of the Trimble GNSS status utility. We hope you found this beneficial and will join us again next time. Thanks.